I just um, took apart the one of the alternators. This was the one that had uh, seven tooth sprocket in it that um, sheared off, and then when I welded it back on, I got spatter all over the teeth, so kind of ruined it. So I've cut that off. Um, I just sort of take it apart while I'm not using it, see what uh, see what it looks like inside. So uh, the stator's got um, the common junction, the neutral point. Um, so this is wired in uh, delta um, and the three poles. That's pretty much all there is to it. And I just put a battery uh, across uh, each of the poles to see what what was going on. Um, and wired in delta as it is, you get two poles uh, magnetized uh, together at the same time. So that's about 15 millimeters across. So then going over to the rotor, so there's 36 poles on that. So going over to the rotor, um, you've got six norths and six souths, um, and they appear to be a little wider. I think they're more like an inch. Or 25, uh, yeah, or 25 millimeters. So that'll over overlap the third pole. So um, I don't know. I guess what I'm thinking vaguely is, uh, do you get a a negative effect because of the width of this uh, interfering with the uh, the adjacent poles, and whether it's worth trimming this off at all? I don't know. I mean, it'll unbalance it, so I'm, I'm not going to do it. It's just a thought I had. Um, these don't retain uh, any magnetism, which is why, uh, unless you've got any field on, they, they're just uh, cog immediately. But, you know, uh, with 12 volts on it, the magnet strength is, is pretty reasonable, um, which I think is why when I've seen some of the permanent magnet versions, um, and they're cogging uh, at quite low uh, power, from what I can tell, um, I don't know, I, I, unless you've got a really strong magnet uh, or you can supplement what you've all already got by maybe putting embedding permanent magnet in here as well as the um, electromagnet and orientating the pole in the same way so uh, so that you get an enhancement. Maybe, that, maybe that's something to think about, but that requires machining. I haven't got machining, so mm, not really going to happen. So I'm going to stick with my voltage. Now, interestingly, I've put 12 volts on this now, and I'll just do that, and hopefully the spanner will shuffle along. Oh, there you go. Um, you know, this is 12 volts, and uh, it's about 4 amps. I measured it earlier. And if you get 24 volts, you get about 8 amps. Now, 8 24s is, uh, what's that, 160 plus 32, so 200 watts, or thereabouts. Now, if you're gunning this at 3 kilowatts and you put in 200 watts into the rotor, well, guess what? It doesn't really matter. So, I don't know, it's a parasitic loss for a strong magnet. Um, I'd take that, and uh, I think that's that's what I'm going to do still think there's something to be gained from optimizing the field um, and I wonder how much of the heat is actually being generated from the 200 or you know at the moment there's what 4 amps times 12 that's 50 watts going in there um, you know <laughs> that's been on since I just switched it on now and uh, you know it's not it's not even thinking vaguely about getting warm so uh, you know, but when I had, uh, I put just put 12 volts across uh, across these two terminals, and that got hot real quick. Um, obviously, that current would have been huge with the uh, the low winding resistance. Um, and I just ran a magnet across here just to see where it repelled. Um, just marked the lines on for the phases. Just sort of illustrate what was going on. Um, but all the heat seems to come from here now. If there's more heat coming from there because you've got less voltage being generated, because uh, so you even need a lot of current, then you know that that's inefficiency. Now, if it's doing it because of slip, because you haven't got a big enough field on this, well, that's saying put more field on. 
um, I guess. So I, I think I'm going to experiment more with uh, putting more field on and uh, seeing what sort of uh, mile, mileage I get um, rather than messing about with trying to modify this with, with permanent magnets. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's simple um, with, the, uh, with the, the electromagnet and it's, uh, what, a couple of hundred watts and I've managed to get 40 mile an hour out of this bike so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty good before it's a proper motorcycle. Um, anyway, so uh, I've got um, my bike set up with um, the normal pack that's in it which is 6 ampere hours plus I've strapped two packs on the back now which are 12 ampere hours each um, so what's that, 30 ampere hours? Uh, well, I might see how far that'll take me. I uh, might go for a ride and uh, um, have a little play with the voltages and uh, maybe just see uh, how far that gets me um, and then try a different voltage another day. Anyway, I should put this back together and uh, re-drill this and get another tiny sprocket to go in there and uh, see if I can rebuild uh, the lower geared version. There we go. Right, so I'll put this back together. Bye.